Up next is Freddie Gamble Jr. coming in right here out of Manning. He's on that boater side. He's got a five bass limit today. Let's see your two best bass. All right, guys, here we go. We're back at the house. First stop of the Toyota Series 2024 is all over with. Uh, down at Lake o Okeechobee, had a good time fishing, had a good time practicing, had a good time fellowship. Met a few, met a few of you guys who do subscribe to the channel. Um, I appreciate that. It's always nice to meet subscribers and, and chop it up a little bit about fishing. Um, I enjoyed it, man, I enjoyed it. Uh, didn't have the quite the, the outcome that I was looking for. Um, Caught fish, just didn't catch the right ones, you know, uh, but I learned a lot just as the last year, the first time I went down there, uh, that was my first time fishing in, in Florida last year. Um, picked up on a lot and uh, was able to carry some of that into uh, the tournament this time. Like I've always heard from other videos and, and people that have way more experience than me on Lake Okeechobee, that lake changes year after year after year after year. You got people, they delete their waypoints because they're no good the next year and this, that, and the other. Um, so it did, it was different. It was very different. It was a whole lot different than uh, than it was last year. Um, some of the places I fished last year, uh, when I when I rolled up this time, I was like, is, is this it? You know, <laughs> but you know, hey, uh, so that held true, that held true, that part held true, that place uh, changes, mats move around. Um, this year, mats have uh, disappeared, a lot of the vegetation has disappeared. Um, you know, they got some things going on down in Florida, I guess, where they're trying to get rid of the grass, trying to get rid of a lot of the, the, the natural vegetation there for whatever reason. Um, anyhow. Fishing was 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 good for us. Fishing was good for us. Um, when we got there on first day of practice, it was, you know, first two or three days, it was uh, chilled temperatures. And um, then, but when you watched the uh, the weather report and extended work, uh, the extended weather forecast, you saw where there was going to be a warming trend, and also there was going to be a full moon um, uh, showing up while we were there. So all that came into play. And it uh, the the fishing got better each day. Um, just as always, when you're in Florida, they say if you don't see boats, you're not around fish. So it's no big deal, you know, to see people fishing on top of one another, see people uh, crowded all in one area. Um, as you know, the lake is huge, man. The lake is huge, but the fish is very small. Okay. Um, while I was there, I checked out some areas that are normally. Uh, highly populated by anglers, you know, during tournaments and things. And uh, there were like three or four areas that were, you know, packed full of people that had a bunch of people in them. All right. And in those three or four areas, you know, people were catching fish. Most of the fish that were being caught in those areas were caught early and then it would taper off. All right. So if you're going down to Lake Okeechobee, you're in a tournament. I know they got, I know they've got the open uh, coming up, uh, this week, I think it is. Um, and listen, man, the, only, the advice that I can give you is don't pull the plug too soon. When you get to your area, if you know there are fish there, you know, and, and you've been catching some good ones in that area, you only need five of them. Hunker down, make it happen, do what you gotta do, stay positive and catch them. I'm, pro I'm telling you, they're there. Um, I live, in South Carolina, my home lake is Santee Cooper, and a lot of times it ain't that way. You know what I'm saying? It ain't that way. Uh, if you're in an area and on a lot of lakes and you're not catching them, they ain't there and they ain't coming. Okay, Okeechobee. What I've learned these last two years, that's not the case. They 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 appear to have little uh, feeding times, if I if I can call it that, to where they. They eat, man. 
you know, you show up there in the morning, it's bang, bang, bang. I've heard stories of uh, guys having their limits by 8.30. Uh, you know, I've heard stories of guys having feeding frenzies early in the morning. And then later in the day, the fish came, they, they started eating again. And, and if you're one of those guys that when that first feeding frenzy is over, you know, two, three hours later, you're like, eh, I got I to gotta do something else. There's a good chance you're going to miss out on another feeding frenzy in that same area. And those are going to be the right fish all over again. Okay. So I, I think I did make that mistake on day two. I think I really did make that mistake on day two. We caught some good fish um, in a popular area down there uh, on, uh, on, in, uh, on the day, on uh, one of the days of practice. And uh, so I decided to hunker down in that area on day two, ended up catching, you know, a couple of good ones. And then I pulled the plug. I pushed the panic button. I went to an area where I knew, I absolutely knew, I'm not going to sit here and lie. I absolutely knew that those fish were not better, but I knew that those fish would bite. Um, and I went there to try to fill the limit, boom, handled my business. But like I said, I knew those fish weren't going to be bigger. They were just fish that were going to bite. And, uh, that's not, that's not the tournament mindset. That's not the winning, uh, thought process. Stay where the big fish are. Stay where the winning fish are. Wait them out, be patient and get it done. All right. And, and that's 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 another learning. Uh, that's another thing I learned this year. So, hey, we'll uh, we'll take everything we can and uh, and put it all together. And one day we're going to land on this thing just right. All right. But what I want to do right now is I want to go over the baits um, that I used in this tournament. The baits that I use in this tournament, um, the baits that caught fish for me, the baits also you know, like I said, you're fishing in crowds, so you're seeing a lot of other people fish the same stuff, all right? And um, and and you land on one, you land on one, you get it right. I mean, sure there was some live scoping going on, sure there was some some uh, parts of some of these big community holes that may have been a little bit better than other others. You know, you got depressions, you got parts of the parts of these big flats that are just better than others. But generally, if you're in those areas and you're doing the right thing, when they start biting, you will catch them. All right, I know the guys down there at the open now, they're dealing with a little bit different weather and it's probably gonna be a lot different because I heard that Florida strain of bass is, um, they, they get a little uncooperative, you know, when the, when the temperatures chill. But nonetheless, I've got the baits that I use down there. I got the baits that caught fish, um, and the baits that I've seen caught fish, all right? The ones that I'm about to show you are the ones that I personally use and the ones that I actually caught fish on, okay? So hopefully it helps you out. I'm gonna run through them real quick, show you what they are, talk a little bit about the setup that I had these baits on, and uh, hopefully when you're there, you can catch fish on them too, all right? Let's get to it. All right, so I've got them all lined out right here. These are, this is the selection that I narrowed it down to. When I got down there, I had like probably 10, probably 10 rods on the deck. It's just stuff rigged up different ways, different line sizes, pretty much the same stuff, but I wanted to see what different line sizes did. If, 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 uh, if they would bite more on, on 15 versus, versus 20 versus 17, you know, if I could, if I had casting distance, this thing, you know, things, things of that nature, I didn't want to, have to fiddle around with that stuff during the tournament. So uh, I had a bunch of rods on the deck when I got down there, but then I narrowed it all down to what I felt like was the setup that was going to be the most efficient for me. Okay. So we'll start out. We'll start out down here. All right. This is, <clears throat> this is my speed worm. Everybody knows you go to Florida, you throw a speed worm. Okay. So this is a speed worm setup that I used. All right, that's a, that's a quarter round, that's a 3 16th, sorry. That's a 3 16th tungsten weight. Uh, I had it pegged with a bobber stop. Um, you don't have to, you know, I don't, I don't know that it makes a big, big of a difference, but I like mine to, to stay compact and stay together. So I use a bobber stop. All right, 
This is your uh, Strike King Cutter Worm in the June Bug color. And uh, you know, you would throw this by, by the same stuff that you would throw everything else um, nearby in, in Florida. You know, we, we fish this through vegetation. If When we found some, we fish this through the dead reeds. We fish this through the, the reed clumps. And uh, if there was a fish there, he bit it. All right, and you could also, um, just, just uh, you didn't have to swim it. You could throw it there and let it, and dead stick it if you wanted to. And uh, they would also bite that. So that was one of the setups that I used right there. Strike King Cutter Worm, uh, 3 16th ounce sinker. That was, uh, and I had it pegged with a bobber stop. I had this on a, 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 a seven to five gear ratio reel. Uh, seven to two, sorry. Had this on a seven to two gear, gear ratio reel and just swimming it through those reeds. Um, that's a that's a five alt owner uh, worm hook. Um, I actually took the advice of one of the pages that I subscribe to. I know a lot of you guys know uh, Todd Castledine. I took that, I took some advice from from something he said on his page where he was missing a lot of fish and he had this similar setup and he had it uh, rigged on a uh, extra wide gap hook and he was getting plenty of bites and he wasn't catching the fish and the advice that was given was to go to a regular worm hook uh, and uh, you know the bite ratio would pick up so I took that advice took that down to Florida with me and that was one of my setups I use this is a uh, uh, 20 pound uh, Seaguar and Viz X that I have that I've had it rigged that I've got it rigged on. So that's one of the setups. All right. The other setup was just a just a straight tail Senko. This is a Gary Yamamoto Senko, black black and blue with the blue tip. I also rigged this same setup. This is a eighth ounce uh, tungsten weight. Then I've also got it pegged the barber stop, and I've also got this on twenty pound. Uh, fluorocarbon in Vizx, Seaguar, all right? Um, and uh, also with a five aught um, worm hook um, by owner. So it's just a straight tail. You dead stick this in the weeds, you throw it there, you forget about it for a couple of minutes and they walk off with it, all right? I'm not used to that, but I'm telling you, if you throw that thing out there and you fish it back this time of year during that spawn, like you normally do on other lakes, you're gonna frustrate yourself. You're not gonna get any bites. Throw that thing out there, leave it there, forget about it. A lot of times you scare the fish off the location. They circle around, they come back, that worm is sitting there and they slam it. Give it time to work. Give it time to work. I had to, that was the hardest thing in the world for me to do because I do not fish that way ever on any other lakes. Give it time to work in Florida, in Florida. All right. I also uh, rigged this same setup with a Gambler Fat Ace in the, uh, in the June bug color. Um, I had a co my, one of my co-anglers through the uh, six inch version and uh, they, seemed to, they seemed to like that. So that's, what, that's another setup. My other setup, when I told you guys I left the, the productive area um, where, where the better fish were hanging out and I went to another area that was uh, had more fish, they just were not big fish. It was some hard bushes in Uncle Joe's Cut on the bank. Everybody knows where Uncle Joe's Cut is, all right? When I went in Uncle Joe's Cut, uh, I, would, I would ignore all the little, I don't know what you call those bushes on the, on the bank, but I would ignore all of that stuff and I would troll down the bank and whenever I saw the hard trees, the hard, the hard trees, the hard bushes on that bank, I would take this rig and I would throw it in there, flip it back in the back back there as far back as I can get it. The water is high, so the bank is, is a little bit further back. So you'd have to, I had to get this bait back in the bushes to where those fish were uh, because when that water's high, they've got the opportunity to get on back in the bushes. So this is what I use then. This is a, a, uh, a vector flipping hook, one ounce weight, bobber stopper, 65 pound braid, and a gambler BB cricket. 
And as you can see, that Gamble BB Cricket is not a big bait. I mean, this thing is rigged with this, uh, with this flipping hook. This thing is rigged from head to toe. There ain't no room for nothing else. Look at that. From head to toe, that sucker is, is all hook. He puts his mouth on that, he's coming with, he's coming with your boy. And that's what happened. I, I, didn't miss, I didn't miss a fish on this thing. You know, the same setup could be used also if you run into a punching bite down there. Uh, some of that stuff, some of the vegetation that is still around is heavy. And so you might want to go to an ounce and a half. You know, those bushes, I was able to get this ounce in there with no problem. And, uh, you know, just a, just a quick flip in there. I remember my co-angler, you know, after I stuck a couple of fish, he was like, hey, um, I don't do this where I live. You know, what does this bite feel like? And I told him, I said, you are not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss it. You'll know. Uh, when you, when you flip it in there, when you flip it in there, there's, there's a, uh, it, it hits the water, goes to the bottom, bam, they slam it. Every single bite was that way. Uh, I, I never had to really bounce it, you know, more than a couple of times before the fish ate it. And like I said, this thing is hooked from head to toe. So whenever they hit it, they had it. I set the hook, fish in the boat. Unfortunately, I just wasn't able to find the bigger ones. But that was my other setup. Now, the meat and potatoes down there, and this is this is for everybody that's that's headed to Florida or is that in that or that's already in Florida. And some of you guys, this is just you know repeated information because you know it is what it is. When you go to Florida, you don't go to Florida without these two baits. You just you just don't. I don't I don't care where you go in Florida. You don't go without these two baits. And uh, I was in an area where there was about twenty boats, thirty boats, forty boats, fifty boats, sixty boats, and you know from even from a distance you could you could see what was going on in that area. All right, and I was prepared for it. I was doing the same thing. Like I said, you had some guys catching fish, some guys not catching fish, but in the, but hey. They were working. And what I got here is a 3 8 ounce jackhammer chatterbait by Z-Man. That's a 3 8 ounce. All right. And I paired it with a 4 inch Zocco trailer. Okay. And I also, I had this, I had this on 17 pound um, fluorocarbon and Viz X on a 6 to 8 gear ratio reel. You know, 6 to 8, 7 to 2 seems to be the, the the magic spot they both work and then uh, I also had the uh, 3 8 ounce jackhammer in the golden shana color all right and I had that paired with the uh, rainbow shiner uh, Zako and it you know it seemed to be a perfect match for this bait uh, the reason I chose to go with Zako guys is uh these trailers that do not have paddle tails but do have some action on the back, they don't overpower the jackhammer. They don't overpower your vibrating jig. I'm not telling you that it's got to be jackhammer. I'm just telling you that when you rig it, don't rig it with a paddle tail, in my opinion. You know, that paddle tail gives off way too much action. And I'm telling you, this jackhammer, the slobber knocker, uh, Everything except the stealth jackhammer gives off enough vibration already until you don't need a trailer back there going crazy and countering what this jackhammer is trying to do. All right, so I just wanted to come on for a little bit and give you guys my setups that I used in Florida. Uh, they all worked. You just gotta get yourself around the right fish. And like I said, don't pull the plug too soon on some of your areas. Don't pull the plug too soon. You got these feeding frenzies that go on down there. And uh, if you're not around when they're biting, of course you can't catch them. So uh, Okeechobee is not a run and gun type of lake. That's what, that's what I've learned in two years. It's not a run and gun type of lake. If you spend your time running around on Okeechobee, um, you just, you're just burning gas. You're just burning gas, man. Hunker down in an area that you have found fish in and, uh, and make it happen, all right? So I thank you guys for tuning in. I know this video was just a little bit long, but uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in and, and uh, 
and paying attention to what I've told you. Hopefully, some of it will help you. And we'll see you guys next time. All right? Peace.